I'm Catholic because it's true. My name is Alexis and welcome to Cum Caritas, where we discover, defend, and live the Catholic faith. Thank you so much for joining me. So let's jump right in. It was founded by Christ. It is the church that Jesus Christ founded. It wasn't Joseph Smith. It wasn't John Calvin. It wasn't Martin Luther. It was Jesus Christ. Matthew 16, verses 18 to 19, it says, and just so you know, I'm using the King James Version for my Protestant friends out there. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I will dive deeper into the chair of Peter in another video, and whenever that's ready, I'll link it somewhere here. But even without all of the other arguments, the writings of the early Christians, the translations of the Aramaic into the Greek, all these things that support this claim, here's how I look at it. I believe that God is a logical God. And so therefore, I believe he is like a father to his children. He would want his children to be in one family, as a whole, as one unit, and not into hundreds and thousands of broken ones and I don't believe that this is something he would leave into interpretation it's so important the Eucharist this is a biggie the Eucharist is the body blood soul and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I can't say this better than Jesus so I'm gonna let him say it for me I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world the Jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day for my my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? For those of you who don't believe in the true presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, non-Catholics and Catholics as well, let me just point out a few things. The Jews found it very difficult to accept, to accept the fact that they were going to eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. That sounds like cannibalism. They thought it was crazy. Later on in verse 60, his disciples, the people already following him, thought it was a hard saying and some of them left. But Jesus repeats himself over and over and over again, saying that this is my flesh and this is my blood. In verse 55, it says, For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. They were asking, is this really what you're trying to say? And he says, yes, this is what I'm trying to say. This is my body and my blood that you must eat so that you can have eternal life. Furthermore, let's look at the word eat. So in English, it's a little lost the word eat. In the Greek translation, Jesus uses two words. There are two words for the word to eat, and that is phago, meaning to eat, to consume, you know, just to eat. Then there is trogo, which is to gnaw, to chew. So this is where it gets so interesting. From John 6 verse 5 until verse 54, he uses the word when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come up to him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? 
John 6, 23. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. John 6, 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from the heaven to eat. John 6, 49. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. John 6, 50. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. John 6, 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. John 6, 52. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? John 6, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Then... All of a sudden, in John 6, verse 54, he says, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him, as the living Father had sent me, and I live by the Father. He that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Just like Jesus building the church on Peter, I believe that this is something that he wouldn't have left for interpretation. And this particular thing even more so. I, I mean, it could not be more literal. Hey, I don't think I got my point across as clearly as I wanted to. So basically, I just meant, why would people be outraged if Jesus was just saying all of this, eating my flesh, eat my flesh, drink my blood, as a metaphor? Why would people be outraged? Why would people, why would his disciples leave because he was teaching a metaphor? It, 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 for me, I don't know for you, it doesn't make sense that people would leave because of a metaphor. Clearly it has to be neighbors. Uh, clearly it had to be yogurt maker. Clearly it was something that was unorthodox. I don't think he was trying to give a metaphor. Just because he repeats himself over and over again. This is my flesh. This is my blood. And that's why people were outraged because he was asking them. He was asking them to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Just like the chair of Peter, I will dive into the Eucharist in another video and I will link that somewhere here whenever it's done. I just really wanted to get a few of these points out there for all of you who don't believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. So tell me, what are some of the reasons that you are Catholic? Tell me some of the reasons why you're not Catholic. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I could keep going. I could give a hundred thousand reasons why I am Catholic. But let me just leave you with this. There's only one reason why you should believe in anything. And that reason is because it is true. So why am I Catholic? I'm Catholic because the Catholic Church is true. Again, I'm Alexis. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. God bless.